As a part of Black History Month, we sat down with three distinguished members of the Penn State Athletics family to discuss the Big Ten Coalition, social justice issues, and more. Mitch Gerber alongside Olivia Jack of the Penn State Women's Swim and Dive Program, head women's basketball coach Carolyn Keeger, and head men's soccer coach Jeff Cook. Olivia, what is the Big Ten Coalition? Basically, the Big Ten Coalition is a bunch of representatives, probably a handful of representatives from each of the schools in the Big Ten. And we all meet usually on Mondays in the afternoon to talk about um, ways that we can collaborate as a conference and um, just different issues that we need to address on, on each other's campuses and ways that we can help each other in doing that. As a member of that group, what is the biggest thing you've learned? I think that um, as with most things, uh, the conversations that we have make it pretty easy to realize that a lot of the struggles that um, Penn State might go through are common on all of the Big Ten campuses. So um, with social justice issues and things like that, there's it's basically pretty common in the conference that we have um, similar issues, honestly. Um, and I don't mean like big or small necessarily, but just like common, there's like a lot of commonalities in the stuff that we talk about. Coach Cook, having a different perspective on the coalition because you're a head coach in the conference, what have you been able to learn from your peers? Well, my favorite part, I would say, first of all, is hearing from the student athletes. And I think that was one of the things that I think Commissioner Warren and the people that have put the coalition together at the Big Ten have done really well. Um, so Olivia and her fellow student athletes from all across the Big Ten are able to share their experiences, their um, things they love about competing in their respective sports at the schools and, and challenges that they face as student athletes, not only in the athletic or academic realm, but just living. And I think that's something that I've, I hope I've always been sensitive to, but in the last nine months to a year have learned an incredible amount about what our student athletes go go through off the court, the field, the pool, whatever it is. And I think those uh, being aware of the emotional toll that something like the pandemic has has put on everybody, but also all the issues surrounding social justice um, that were exposed really with the George Floyd movement. And I would also say, I think Olivia, if I'm remembering correctly, some of the work you started very early, almost preceded the coalition uh, at the Big Ten level right here on campus. And we were in touch on that. So I think there's a really active black student athlete organization here that Olivia's uh, been really a, a leader in. Um, so that's something that I've taken away in the, in the months since I've been involved. Olivia, Coach Cook referenced the work you've done outside of the coalition. What was he hinting at? I'm pretty sure the Big Ten Coalition started in June, and I had also started earlier in June um, a website with a, a high school athlete um, from my area, and it's called Athletes for Equal Rights. And basically, um, the three main sections are, the first one is resources for people to like go to the website and have information available and websites available that they can look at um, about different social issues. Um, the second part is for black student athletes to submit their stories and there isn't really any structure to it. It's basically open for them to talk about any experiences they want to talk about um, and let them have that platform um, because we don't usually have that kind of platform. Um, and the last part of it is um, workouts that are organized weekly and there's a there's a daily workout um, that's linked to a specific statistic uh, about the experiences of black people in America. So like for example, one week is based off of incarceration rates. And so each day of the week, um, there's a workout um, linked to a statistic based off of different, like the, the difference in incarceration rates between usually black men and the rest of the population. Coach Keeger, how has the coalition been a springboard to your outlook on social justice issues? Yeah, I would echo Coach Cook. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing for me is hearing from the student athletes of where we can be better uh, and, and where we need to, to be better. Um, and, and when you have a group like the Big Ten coming together to figure out where we can um, educate ourselves, educate the conference, educate our communities, and then use that 
uh, to make steps towards change, I think has been the biggest thing for me because it's one thing to talk about it. It's one thing to educate and then it's another to make action steps towards it. So when you talk about the committees and the subcommittees that have been formed by the Big Ten, it's encouraging to me because actual work is being done. And um, I mean, Olivia has done a great job w- with that as well of, you know, being engaged with all those committees and, and speaking up on, you know, Zoom calls with 150 people. She's been an awesome representative for Penn State. And, um, you know, it's it's really just encouraging to see when, when growth is starting to happen. You mentioned hearing from your athletes about the areas where you need to be better. What are those? Well, I think obviously the goal of the coalition is to is to seek tangible ways to actively and constructively combat racism and hate in our communities, in in the world, in in the United States, whatever it might be. And I think we all know we're a long way from that. Um, And I think it's it's gonna take a lot of work um, to to get to that point where we are constructively combating it. And and we are to a point where people feel equal and people feel that they're welcomed and celebrated. Um, So, I mean, there's so many ways to start in so many places that uh, sometimes I think it can be overwhelming. Uh, but I think this coalition has done a great job starting, you know, it j- just getting the start down. And now it's going to take all of us, not just the coalition, everybody in the Big Ten, everybody at Penn State to continue to work. And um, that's where I think the real change is going to be made. Coach Keeger mentioned it's going to take everybody. Coach Cook, what can we learn as a society from the conversations that you've had within your program? Yeah, it's a big question. Uh, I think first and foremost, and this is my own opinion, that what was lacking, what has been lacking recently is honest and difficult debate based in reality, based in facts. And I think that's an environment we're trying to create. Uh, you know, there's a um, Say No to Racism campaign in the English Premier League, for example, where right before kickoff, after the anthems are played, the players kneel uh, after a whistle from the referee and we're going to our players are intending to do that so we had a really open conversation about what that meant for each individual and as the head coach i don't want to be the person saying you know you you must kneel or you know you don't have you, you shouldn't kneel it's not my job to tell our student athletes how to feel or what to think but it's my job to promote and promote an environment where they can have these difficult conversations knowing that those opinions, those viewpoints, as long as they're respectful and well thought out, aren't going to impact playing time or whether they make the trip to the next Big Ten game. So I think that's really important what we're trying to have. And we had some really good dialogue on how people are feeling. And I just what we are encouraging our guys to do quite simply is think and talk openly and honestly based on the reality of what some of our student athletes go through. I'll never know it as a white male. I'll never know what that really feels like. Um, And I, I think listening and being supportive and being truthful are are the fundamental values we have to continue to strive for. Olivia, what's the most important aspect that other student athletes, coaches, or friends need to listen to when they approach you for advice on social justice issues? Um, First, I'd just like to say I'm really gracious for um, both Coach Cook and Keeger. Uh, they've both been outstanding in being able to like have their their athletes have the platform to be able to talk on their teams and i i've heard that from my friends on your teams and i just really appreciate that because it really goes a long way um i think that going to talk to coaches and i i think what i would most benefit from is feeling like I can speak completely openly and honestly with my coaches and that I can tell them exactly what I'm thinking, um, no matter whether it might make them upset or not. I think that that's something that I've always kind of looked for and my coaching staff has been great with that. Um, I can go to them and talk to them about absolutely anything that's going on um, that I might need support with. But I think that our team can do better with having conversations like the men's soccer team is having. Um, I think that a lot of other teams, honestly, on this campus can do better with that too. It's obviously hard to have the conversations where some people might not agree on the topic and have conversations where um, I guess there's polarized political opinions or something something attached where people might feel very um, I guess, opinionated in a certain way. But at the same time, there's a lot of social issues that um, all the athletes here might go through, especially specific groups. 
And so when um, we talk about being 800 strong and um, following like the we are slogan, I think that, that that should include having the conversations and having the hard conversations and having the, the meetings with the team and having those hard conversations, not necessarily just having um, the, like having the um, athletes that are from minority groups, having the confidence to go to the coaches. I think that it's something that the whole team should be able to talk about um, so that the athletes are supporting their teammates as well. If someone were to approach you looking to discuss social justice issues, where should they start? Honestly, that's that's probably the hardest part. And I think that's why um, so many teams might not have started yet. Um, I think the best place to start is just to ask whatever's on your mind. Um, because as soon as you ask the question that you have on your mind with the most honesty, then you can get the most honest resp response back. I think that's the best way to do, the best way to start any conversation, honestly. Coach Keeger taking Olivia's advice to be transparent. When your program went downtown this past summer to take part in those peaceful BLM protests, what specifically races to your mind about that day? I think for our team, it, it started long before that um, it happened on campus. And uh, first and foremost, a platform where they can tell their feelings. They, they can share what they're feeling. They can express how they're feeling about what's going on in our country or how they feel on campus and have a platform where they can feel safe and they they have you know an open forum to discuss anything that they need. So our, our team had, had numerous conversations um, about it, about their life at Penn State, uh, about ways we could be better as a program, about ways Penn State could be better. And um, then eventually um, came this protest um, for, for Brianna and you know our, our team was involved with the candlelight coach Cook was there Olivia was there uh, the night uh, prior and it was it was a very emotional night and so many people got up and, and said some beautiful things um, and some hard things to hear and a uh, majority of our team was there and it, it was great to support them and, and see them in that light supporting and then the next day was um, the protest and um, you know, Olivia once again w was front and center leading leading the charge and um, I think our student athletes and, and our players need to feel that we have their back and that we support them no matter what and, and we will be there to protect them and, and we will be there to um, challenge them to be better, challenge others to be better. And that day for me was a big day, not only for our program, but to see the soccer teams, to see men's basketball, to see the swimmers, uh, just to see the student athletes come together for something bigger than ourselves. It, it was very inspiring. Coach Cook, what's the right way for one of your student athletes to approach you about social justice issues? I learned this lesson shortly after George Floyd. I was actually in the car with my son, Kieran, who's a proud Penn State sophomore as well in the School of Architecture. And uh, you'll remember my good friend Tunde Ogunbi, who was our assistant coach for my first two years here. Um, Tunde moved back to Philadelphia and we had a conversation in just days after George Floyd was, was murdered. And, you know, we, we kind of asked him that question. And he said, you know, all you have to do is say, how you doing? And and he said, just, and then just shut up. That's what he said to me affectionately, like, just listen, you know? And I think that's the starting point of not trying to explain it away, trying to rationalize with someone that people's feelings are their feelings. And I, I believe personally that that's a really important first step is just to acknowledge that however, any person that comes to you is feeling about a situation, one of the most important things you can do is acknowledge that that's a real feeling and not try to explain why it shouldn't be that way or or why that might not happen again or whatever the case may be. So I, I think that I would, <clears throat> we often do try to, you know, make sure that our players know that there's the there's the soccer side of, you know, skills and tactics and physical development and all those kind of things. And that's, we all compete and really at the elite level of NCAA Division One in all our respective sports. But then there's a much more important personal side and they shouldn't, they're very well connected, but one doesn't impact the other. You know, and we can have a really difficult practice where we're challenging someone to do better, do their best. And if 10 minutes later that player walks in, well, in the pre-COVID days, walks in the office or, you know, wants to come up and have a conversation, we can still have that even if even if we're challenging each other in the, in the sports environment. Olivia, when you reflect back on the events of the past 365 days, 
What's a moment you're proud of? Honestly, I am, I used to be a very quiet person and I didn't really talk about anything that was on my mind. And um, I express most of it through art. I, um, I usually like paint to get rid of my emotions and any stress mm. that I have. That's like my uh, stress reliever. So I used to just paint and let all my, my emotions go out into that. But um, we had a team meeting uh, during the summer um, following the, George, the murder of um, George Floyd. And it was actually a sports psychology meeting. And uh, Carl Olson had reached out to me before it and asked if I had anything that I had wanted to say. Um, and I spent probably a good 15 minutes talking about a lot of things that had been on my mind about things that um, were bothering me and things that I thought our team could do better with, um, with regards to the social issues and being more aware. Um, and so I think that might be my proudest moment of uh, 2020 because I actually spoke about what was bothering me for the first time, and I felt like I got a lot of out, I, lo I felt sorry I felt like I got a lot out of it um, because a lot of my teammates and coaches reached out to me, not necessarily apologizing, but recognizing that they could do better and have done better since. So that was definitely my proudest moment. Coach Keeger, what's been the most challenging moment over the past calendar year? I would say to keep the conversation continuous, you know, to, to keep it relevant every day and to keep, um, you know, striving for improvement. I, I think, you know, when our team came together, uh, Coach talked a little bit about this, but for the national anthem and we were discussing what we wanted to do as a program and how to stay united. Um, it was a challenging conversation, but it was honestly a beautiful conversation at the same time because everyone kind of spoke up and said their opinion. Everyone wasn't afraid to say why they wanted to stand, why they wanted to kneel. And we had a very, I don't know if debate is the word, but we had a, a, a great conversation about what to do. And they ended up writing a script that we, we say before games. It's on the um, you know, Jumbotron and we kneel during that. Um, and then we all stand together for the national anthem. And that's what they came up with, what they wanted to do as a program. So it was a very challenging conversation to hear everyone, but it, it came out to be uh, extremely powerful. And I'm proud of our players for that. But I think the challenging thing is, is to continue the daily conversations and um, the, on, the ongoing work. For those that look up to the three of you and ask the question, what can I do better? What do you want your message to be? <laughs> um, well, I think about my siblings when you ask that question because um, I, I'm the oldest of four and my I have a 19-year-old brother, a 15-year-old brother, and a 14-year-old sister. And so I think that um, with my involvement in the Black Lives Matter movement and um, the coalition, I've talked to my sister a lot about it because I think it's very important for um, especially black women to know that they they belong and that our voice can be so powerful if we use it. And um, I think that, or I hope that um, like people that are younger than me, I, it's, it's weird for me to think that people are looking up to me. Um, I've never really, I've never really stopped to think about that, but when I think about people that might be looking up to me, I guess I would really urge them to just speak their mind because that might be the hardest thing, uh, but it's the first step towards making any difference in your community. And a lot of times people have really powerful thoughts that they might be more tentative to talk about um, that in the end might make such a difference. And so I think just building the courage to be able to speak your mind, I think is the most important first step. Well, I'm working on the, as part of the inclusion um, subcommittee. And one of the things that really, has really been important to me um, is this idea of opening up avenues. You, and, and that's a little bit the way I've seen recruiting throughout my career is that you're opening up opportunities to student athletes across the country. In our, in our case, we're, we're carrying a, a soccer ball bag. Olivia's going to the pool and Coach Keeger has got a, a bag of, you know, a rack of basketballs. And we're using that platform to open up opportunities. Um, and so I think my message would be that we're not done yet and things are 
slowly evolving and have done. But what's glaring to me is that the progress is far too slow. And Keegs, I'll, I'll tell you, I just finished John Thompson's book. Um, great book about the legendary late great uh, basketball coach at Georgetown, John Thompson. It's called I Came as a Shadow. And he talks about uh, the episode where he actually walked off the court. Um, must have been late 1990s. The NCAA put a proposition um, eliminating scholarships for student athletes who didn't hit some basic uh, academic markers. And Coach Thompson's point, and I'm paraphrasing, but was essentially that that disproportionately impacted students from disadvantaged backgrounds where there wasn't support for standardized testing, where maybe there wasn't, you know, fully funded public schools, for example. And he, for two games, walked off the court and wouldn't refuse to coach his team. And the NCAA changed that. And so going forward now to 2021, there are still avenues that we can work towards to make opportunities more available to a wider part of our society to come and you know play their sport, to study, to get great degrees um, at Big Ten schools and all, all different kinds of institutions across our country. So that work's really important to me because I think that's what our jobs as coaches represents, providing opportunities and creating platforms and without sounding too grand, you know, it's changing people's lives through through sports and through recruitment. And I think that has to be more a more balanced um, distribution of opportunity. Yeah, I think my message would be to have the courage and the strength to stand up for what's right, plain and simple. And, um, you know, to, to be on the right side of change and to be about it and to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, are standing behind a tweet or are talking about what they want to change, but they're not actively pursuing change. And if they see something, they're not standing up for what's right. And I think that would be my message, have the strength. Olivia, Coach Keeger and Coach Cook, appreciate your time and open dialogue. Thank you. Thank Olivia's you. Olivia's a rock star. I hope everyone knows it.